From CNY Central, this is the CW6 News at 10. Now in enhanced widescreen. We are tracking some shocking breaking news right now. Syracuse police have confirmed they are investigating allegations against Syracuse University assistant basketball coach Bernie Fine. Good evening, I'm Matt Mulcahy. This has all been unfolding within the last two hours or so this evening. Tonight, longtime assistant coach Bernie Fine has now been placed on administrative leave by the university. According to ESPN.com, he's accused of molesting young boys. Here's what we know right now. Police will only confirm to us that they're investigating allegations against Fine, coach Jim Beheim's longtime assistant. They won't say what those allegations are, but it is being reported that Fine may have molested a team ball boy. Here's what the university is saying about this right now. It first heard of these allegations going back to 2005. Tonight, the senior vice president of public affairs at SU, Kevin Quinn, issued this statement saying the university immediately launched its own comprehensive investigation through legal counsel. That nearly four month long investigation included a number of interviews with people the complainant said would support his claims. All of those identified by the complainant denied any knowledge of wrongful conduct by the associate coach, meaning Bernie Fine. That associate coach also vehemently denied the allegations. That was 2005. We asked him the key. Well, Fine has been the assistant coach for Hall of Fame coach Jim Beheim for Beheim's entire tenure at Syracuse University. He's been at the school for 35 years. Tonight, ESPN is saying Fine started molesting this ball boy in the mid 1980s, and the abuse lasted for more than 12 years. ESPN interviewed the alleged victim who gave details of what he says happened. We want to warn you, this is pretty graphic material. Bernie Fine, according to Bobby Davis, um, grabbed his penis, pulled on his penis, and got him to ejaculate on many occasions. Um, Bobby told me that this happened probably hundreds, if not a thousand times. Now, according to ESPN, the alleged victim says head coach Jim Beheim knew he was traveling on the road and sleeping in Bernie Fine's room. The man says coach Beheim would come in and even see him lying on the bed and scowl. The man says he would arrive to away games a day earlier than Fine's family, his wife and children, and the two would spend the night in a hotel room. Our breaking news coverage continues tonight with Caitlin Nuclo. She has the latest live from Marshall Street tonight where students are stunned by this information and how quickly it spread. Caitlin. Yeah, Matt, this breaking news is certainly spreading very quickly <coughs> on the SU Hill tonight, and students uh, shocked and saddened, to say the least, about these allegations. It's really amazing how quickly it spread. Nearly everyone we spoke with shortly after that news broke had already heard about the allegations between word of mouth and social media sites. ESPN broke the news late this evening after a victim came forward claiming he was sexually abused by Fine more than 12 years ago. Fine had been an assistant basketball coach for the last 35 years. Now, right now, Syracuse police are looking into these allegations. SU has also investigated and conducted numerous interviews. Students we spoke with tonight say they hope the investigations are thorough and taken very seriously. The Paterno case just um, came out and all of a sudden SU is involved in a very similar situation. And I'm just wondering, my first reaction, like, did anybody know about this? Like, how long has this been going on? The whole thing with Joe Paterno just happened. This is so close to, to home, too, just being a part of the university. You just never think something like that can happen. I hope it's not true. I hope, you know, something that comes out and it turns out to be just an allegation. But if it is, you can't hold us to any different standard than you hold them. I just hope to God it's not true. I hope so much is not true. But I, I hope that with the rumors that the investigation is ser taken seriously. Right now, Fine has been placed on administrative leave. According to SU, he has strongly denied these allegations. Reporting live from the SU Hill tonight, I'm Caitlin Nuclau. Thank you, Caitlin. Now, just yesterday, Syracuse University Chancellor Nancy Cantor sent an email to faculty, students, and staff with advice on what to do if you see or suspect child abuse. She told everyone to call 911, Child Protective, or the school's Department of Public Safety should such a case arise. Of course, all this comes as scandal is rocking the Penn State football program. An assistant coach there, Jerry Sandusky, is accused of abusing at least eight boys over 15 years. Head coach Joe Paterno was fired after allegations he was told about the abuse and that he didn't do enough to report it.
Well, the Penn State scandal has brought this issue to the forefront. Has everyone talking, including a potential second victim in the Bernie Fine case? New tonight, Syracuse and the country is talking about this. Our team coverage continues with Lisa Spitz, who's following all this reaction online, Twitter, Facebook, very busy with this it tonight. It is, and Matt, we have this just in. Coach Jim Beheim telling the New York Times that he does not believe these allegations whatsoever. This is just breaking online. His reaction, of course, so many Central New Yorkers are reacting. Let's take a look right now at our Facebook page. People are questioning one thing, the timing of this. Jim saying, I don't believe it. So out of the blue and, you know, talking about with Sandusky and that whole thing at Penn State. So some people are questioning the timing. Other people just saying that it's one thing to have those allegations at Penn State were far removed from that, but to have something obviously here so close is just sh so shocking to, to so many people. Twitter, this is trending right now worldwide. I can tell you on our page, Matt, we have never seen in the history of our tweets something get tweeted this much off a story from our website. Well, we do know that the university has said they investigated this in 2005, mm -hmm. that it went to the Syracuse police, we believe, according to the victim mm -hmm. who talked to ESPN back in 2003. Nothing came of those investigations in terms of any findings. Uh, but we also know that the world has changed in the last two weeks because of the Penn State story right. and Jerry Sandusky and what happened to Coach Paterno. So everything gets framed that way now instead of how it might have been five right. or six years okay. ago. Yes, and, and I have to say on Twitter, for people that are just going, I mean, every little detail, people just tweeting every little thing and every different part of this investigation. I can tell you, I did go to Bernie Fine's home tonight in the DeWitt area, and he did not come to the door. Somebody did. They told us to get off the property. We did. He used to have those fashion shows. I know you and I both took yeah, part was, in them. I was them. at his house this summer. Yep, I was at his house uh, a couple years ago taking part in a fashion show, and he had them for the Boys and Girls Club. Making, making it even more difficult to yes. hear this news for mm -hmm, people tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, still, uh, the latest is from the Syracuse police and investigations underway. Lisa, yes. thank you. Mm -hmm. We'll get back to reaction as we continue here tonight. The sports world is also reacting tonight. Fine is an established name within the SU program, and he's been at Bayheim's side for his entire run here. Sports director John Evanson joins us now with the latest details on, and the fallout from these allegations. John. That's right, Matt. While these at this point are just allegations, the entire nation is talking about this story tonight for obvious reasons, especially because we were all just trying to process still the Penn State sexual abuse scandal. There is breaking news to talk about on this night. We're going to now Sportsnet New York was airing the Yukon Huskies game tonight when the news broke. They spent their entire halftime show trying to sort out what few details were known at the time. One of the analysts on the SNY desk was former SU assistant coach Tim Welsh, a guy who worked with Bernie Fine while the alleged sexual abuse would have been going on. Welsh was visibly stunned as he spoke to a live television audience. I've never heard this before, ever, and I don't think anyone around the program, I'm as close to the program as anybody that didn't play there or doesn't work there. I uh, was just actually up there uh, for four or five days covering a couple of their games, uh, two, their, their last two ball games. Uh, actually, every game Syracuse, every road game that Syracuse played during my three years at Syracuse, my roommate on the road in the hotel was Bernie Fine. Mm. Uh, I've shared over, probably over a at least over a thousand meals with him in my lifetime and uh, you know I was there for the birth of his third child in the hotel in the in the hospital uh, this guy is wow. uh, has an impeccable reputation that's all I can tell you about him and I don't know anything about the, what's been said tonight I can't put my arms around it right now uh, I'm uh, a little shaken myself well, Tim Welsh, as uh, many others are tonight, trying to process what has become just a surreal news story tonight, especially, as mentioned, coming off everything that we've witnessed at Penn State. Matt. Well, thank you, John. Our coverage of these disturbing allegations continues throughout our newscast tonight. Still ahead, we're going to look back at the storied career of Bernie Fine at SU, which may well continue, and we'll be sharing your comments throughout the evening tonight. Now, you can keep track of the latest updates on our website, cnycentral.com. We have several stories and links about the Bernie Fine Syracuse basketball story as it's been breaking throughout the evening tonight. 
Well, also on our Facebook page, we're also getting pictures from all over tonight about snow falling and fairly intensely in some places in the lake effect zone. Here's first alert meteorologist Mike Brookins with the latest. Mike. Yeah, man, primarily getting hit Oswego County, northern Oneida County, those two areas under a lake effect snow warning through tomorrow morning. Advisories in those counties in the pink, not included on Onondaga County. Live triple Doppler radar tracking this lake effect snow just north of the city of Syracuse. And it, we've seen some thunder snow. We've seen some grapple or ice pellets as well. Right along the lake shore could be a mixture, but when you get inland, it's pure snow, and at times it's coming down an inch or two per hour. So we've already got some reports of two or three inches of snow on the ground in portions of Oswego County. There you can see some of the probably thunder snow where it's heavy near Mineto uh, towards Oswego. If we go further to the east around Parrish on Route 81, some pretty moderate to heavy snowfall. Also in northern sections of Oneida County, north of Rome, up towards Ava and over towards Blossvale. So our forecast for the overnight, we're still expecting snow to to the north, the chilly breezy down to 30, and we're going to talk about how much snowfall will accumulate coming up with our snowfall forecast map in the seven day. You want to track this snow? Do it at cycentral.com interactive Doppler radar. Matt. Well, thank you, Mike. Coming up on the news at 10 more on the assistant basketball coach Bernie Fine being placed on administrative leave tonight. Part of the Syracuse University success over three decades or more. We'll have more on the allegations against Fine throughout the newscast tonight. You're watching the CW6 News at 10, the only hour-long newscast at 10 in Central New York. Well, SU basketball fans trying to process what has become a very surreal breaking news story. Syracuse police are investigating molestation allegations against SU assistant basketball coach Bernie Fine. To recap, here's what we know so far. Syracuse police will only confirm to us that they are investigating allegations against Fine. They will not specify the allegations, but it is being reported that Fine may have molested a team ball boy. ESPN broke the news late this evening after a victim came forward claiming he was sexually abused by Fine for more than 12 years. Now here's what the university is saying tonight. It first heard of the allegations back in 2005. The senior vice president for public affairs at SU, Kevin Quinn, and he issued a statement. The university immediately launched its own comprehensive investigation through its legal counsel. That nearly four-month-long investigation included a number of interviews with people the complainant said would support his claims. All of those who identify, who were identified by the complainant denied any knowledge of wrongful conduct by the associate coach, Bernie Fine. The associate coach also denied the allegations as well. As we told you earlier, Fine has now been placed on administrative leave while the these allegations are investigated. Meanwhile, as you can imagine, reactions still pouring in from the SU Hill tonight. Here's Nico Tamurian with more on that. Well, John, no question, all of Orange Nation shocked when they first heard the news of these allegations against Bernie Fine. Bernie, of course, has been a fixture on the Hill the past 40 years. Now, we were able to talk to some SU students who, like most Orange fans at home, say these allegations were something they never even thought were possible. I feel like, especially after the recent news with Penn State, um, like that's where I'm from and it's it sucks to hear that people who are in constant contact with students that this that abuse is, is potentially happening um, that we have to investigate um, I feel like it shouldn't be investigation but rather prevention that we should be working on and it's sad that you know that we're always a bit too late it seems and stick around in just a few minutes. I'll go over Bernie's history on the Hill and just what he has meant to this SU basketball program. John? There is breaking news to talk about on this night. We're going to. Well, thank you, Nico. Sportsnet New York was airing the UConn Huskies game tonight when the news broke. They spent their entire halftime show trying to sort out what few details were known at the time. One of the analysts on the desk, former SU assistant coach Tim Welsh, says he remembers the alleged victim, Bobby Davis, from his days with the program back in the late 80s. You know, he was a young man that worked our camp for years. We, as we had one of the largest camps in America. So, I mean, a lot of people worked our basketball camp, and I have a collection and memory of a lot of young men that did great things with us back in those days but that's it I mean that's uh, uh, that's it that's where it ends you know that ends on the basketball court and in helping the program which a lot of people did when you talk about a program as big as Syracuse there's a lot of people that are involved in the program over the years he was involved but that doesn't mean anything and then that statement there uh, on live TV, you know, less than a half an hour after this thing broke earlier tonight. Coach Jim Beheim has put out an official statement now through the university, and here's what it says. He says, this matter was fully investigated by the university in 2005, as we've already alluded to. It was determined that the allegations were unfounded. 
Coach Beheim says, I've known Bernie Fine for more than 40 years. I've never seen or witnessed anything to suggest that he would have been involved in any of the activities alleged. And he says, I would have taken action if I had seen or suspected anything. Bernie has my full support. That's from Coach Jim Beheim tonight. Uh, longtime friends, colleagues, neighbors yeah. standing by Bernie Fine tonight. So yeah. we'll see where it progresses from here. We have more as we continue. We'll be right back. Continue the coverage of our breaking news tonight, the Syracuse University basketball story. Longtime SU assistant coach Bernie Fine has been placed on administrative leave tonight. Syracuse police confirm they are investigating allegations against Fine. They won't say what those allegations are. According to ESPN, Fine's accused of molesting boys. Nico Tamurian continues our team coverage now with a look at Bernie Fine's career at uh, Syracuse University. He's been alongside Jim Beheim since the very first day he came in as head co no coach. No question, that. We're both people that have lived in Syracuse our whole lives, and we know, you know, what Bernie Fine has meant to this program. You don't think SU basketball without thinking Jim Beheim and Bernie Fine. That's right. You know, certainly, he's been there with Beheim throughout the whole thing, and Jim Beheim has said before that there is no Jim Beheim without Bernie Fine. That says a lot. Fine has been next to Beheim on the bench for 30 five years of fixture on the SU Hill and Bernie is the associate head coach given that title 11 years ago as a reward for his loyalty to the Orange program. No doubt other programs have come calling for fine services but he decided to stay with the Orange. Now he is mostly responsible on a day-to-day -day basis for coaching SU's forwards and centers and if you want to see how much that work has helped this now elite program look at some of the legendary big men like Ronnie Cycli, Derek Coleman perhaps more indicative of Fine's work. Look at the improvement of big men on the hill like Atan Thomas or Rinze Onowaku in their time on the hill. Hakeem Warwick is a great name to throw in there. You just really can't overstate how much Fine has meant to this program. And let's just reiterate, these are at this point, just allegations and a Syracuse police investigation at this point. Coach Beheim saying tonight the matter was investigated in 2005 and the allegations were determined to be unfounded. But SU's rise to among the top programs in the nation over the past 40 years, no doubt, has a lot of credit to Bernie Fine being there with Coach Beheim the entire time. Also, something to add to this, we haven't heard from former players as, right. of, as, of, yet, as of yet, but I've also heard from them in the past that Bernie Fine is, is the glue that's kept them all together no all these question. years. Staying in contact, uh, keeping a, a file of phone numbers and ways to get in touch yeah, with everybody. And, and when you watch games, you know, Coach Bay, I may be heated over a mistake or something. Bernie's the guy who's there kind of helping the player through it. Hey, you know, keep your head up sort of thing. And he's yeah. meant a lot to all of those players, no That's question. That's for sure. We'll continue to follow the story. We'll be back with more. You're watching the CW6 News at 10. Good evening, I'm Matt Mulcahy. We're checking on the weather tonight where it's been a lake effect, uh, intense snow band tonight, really the first of the season. Mike Brookins has been following this as the very latest on who's getting hit fairly hard this evening. Mike. Well, we're getting hit primarily in the lake effect snow belts. We're used to this a little bit more when it's December, January, and February. Here we are, middle of November. We've got thunderstorm in some sports spots of Oswego County already. A couple of inches on the ground, several more to go as we go through the night. The roads are becoming snow covered up here. Plows likely out there plowing or uh, throwing some salt down at the least. The band is making a slight shift down to the south out to the west. So we're going to flirt with the band here in Syracuse. Maybe a coating of snow as you work into northern portions of the county, northern Lysander, northern Cicero and Clay. We may get an inch or two with a lot more as you jump into Oswego County and then also into Oneida County. Looks like the throughway quarter getting into the band of snow now. Let's go a little closer out to the west and here we've got some of that thunder snow, one to two inches an hour, of course, right along the lake. Shore right now to the northeast and east of Sotus, just to the west of Fairhaven. Also near Hannibal, just to your south, we're dealing with some pretty moderate to heavy snow. North Valney to Clifford right now in Oswego County, just southwest of Mexico. Very heavy snow and east of Parrish on 81. Lastly, we'll go over towards the Tug Hill and into Oneida County, and you can see pretty moderate to heavy snowfall right there. So at the bus stop, we're actually going to find the band weaken somewhat to snow showers, and then as the later morning comes along, the winds become west and it will lift up to the north to at least due east of Lake Ontario breezy chilly with temperatures near 32. Track this snow as it shifts around central New York right down to street level mapping using interactive Doppler radar. You can find that at cnycentral.com. We've got another look at that snowfall forecast map coming up. Matt. 
Thank you, Mike. Breaking news tonight, Coach Bernie Fine of Syracuse University has been placed on administrative leave due to an investigation. Syracuse police have confirmed that they are in the very early stages of an investigation into allegations made against the SU associate basketball coach, Bernie Fine. Fine had coached at Syracuse University for 35 years. Police would not elaborate on what those allegations are. However, ESPN.com has reported that they involve molesting a team ball boy. The alleged victim is named Bobby Davis. He's now 39 years old. Syracuse police say the information came to the department today. Chris McGrath joins us now to talk about what ESPN learned and how that story came together. Chris. Well, Matt, ESPN reporter Mark Schwartz says he's spoken with this alleged victim, Bobby Davis, a number of times and described with great detail this alleged sexual abuse. As we told you earlier, Schwartz reporting that Davis' uh, penis was touched hundreds, if not thousands of times by Bernie Fines, causing him to ejaculate on many occasions. Schwartz reports this happened over the course of 15 or possibly 16 years, starting in the mid-1980s both at the Fines home and on SU's campus. Now, this was brought to ESPN's attention back, to back in 2003, and, and but the Sports Network and, uh, never reported it so because they could not validate so those claims until now. We tried to corroborate Bobby Davis's story by getting other victims to step up, and Bobby convinced us that there are many other victims that he knows of, many other kids that hung around Bernie Fines' house and he knew either by witnessing or hearing that these young men were also, as he put it, under Bernie's spell. Now you hear Bernie's spell. According to Schwarz, uh, Davis told him he first met Bernie Fine selling candy in that neighborhood, referred to Fine as the king of Syracuse because, as everyone knows, he's a longtime SU basketball assistant, and that many, many kids wanted to hang around and did hang around Fine's home. But according to Schwarz, Davis told him Fine would hang things over people's heads, reminding them about all the trips he brought them on and dinners he took them to. But now at this point, ESPN convinced that there is merit to the story, and as we've told you, Syracuse police have started to investigate, although they have not confirmed what exactly they are investigating, Matt. All right, I appreciate that, Chris, explaining the, the origin of this becoming right. a, a national story tonight. Thank you, Chris McGrath. Well, up next, Michael Benny is here now with a preview of our Talk at 10. We'll be talking more about the uh, allegations against Coach Fine and the coverage surrounding it. Michael. Matt, good evening. Stunning bombshell allegations rocking not just Syracuse University sports fans, but people all over the country. Bernie Fine is now a worldwide trending topic on Twitter. If you use Twitter, you know that that is a really big deal. The Talk at 10 is next.